And I was going to say too that it's you you meant you use the word complicated, and I think that you know gets misconstrued with complexity. Complicating mm. complicating your code and making it more complex. You know, just I, I think most developers kind of use those interchangeably, but complexity doesn't necessarily. Because look, if you think of the word complicated, it has this negative connotation. It you, you think of, well, it's complicated. That means it's harder to follow. It's harder to work with and maintain. But complexity, although it does, um, it does add more, I guess, you know, more to your code, more to consider, more to have to think about. It also at the same times, if you're using design patterns or if you're leveraging a shared language, that l- complexity a lot of the times you don't even have to think about the complexity. All you have to do is know it's there, but you don't actually have to dive into the details in your mind. And that's where complication comes in. So this class that we're going to look at in and of itself is very complicated. When we refactor it, it's going to become more complex architecturally, but it's going to be less complicated because if you're not concerned about input, you don't even need to think about input. You know it's there because... it's been architected in a complex way where we we're going to have a, an input handling class. But as long as you don't care about input handling, you don't even have to think about it. And I think that's where complexity actually makes this code less complicated in the long run. I, I think that's also a very good point is that at the end of the day, so what I was talking about was the contract you have with the outgoing code. So you have a you know, button pressed or mouse clicked function. And that seems very straightforward and you could write the two or three lines of code inside of there or you could have it provided by something or handled elsewhere by a handler. And while that may add extra layers, and let's be real, like you're not, you cannot refactor your code into bite-sized chunks and not have more classes. That's just a fact of how, like that's just how it works. You can avoid class explosion Mm. by managing when you do it and why you do it. Mm. So it will get more difficult to work with if you are new to a system, that is undeniably true. It is easier to read, open a file with a thousand lines in it, and after you, you know, recover from the shock, you can read through it, and you can probably at least see everything is in here somewhere. But you're going to have a hard time understanding um, where to find everything in that giant file, right? And then you'll have to start jumping around it and to see what's going on. The difference is, you will still have that level of in- initial confusion with an architected system. But the difference is you will be able to read every file you open. Will you know what each thing connects to? No, because what, what gets abstracted away in a large system is the connection points. Hmm. So you would say, if mouse click do thing, you will at least know that's always true. And the question becomes, what does a mouse click and what is the thing that happens? If you open up a large file, you'll see what the code is, but you won't be able to see where, what those things are calling and where they're going as far as the rest of the file goes. It's hard to describe what I mean, but we'll hopefully get we'll, we'll explain this better when we show actual code. Yeah, examples. yeah. I think when we get into the code, it'll... all I'm all I really mean is <clears throat> it may feel, and I've I've done this myself. It may feel like you take a class that was working, and you you apply a load of architecture to it, and you're really proud of yourself. And then you come back to it later and go, "Oh crap! I actually hate working with the new version more than the old version because the new version has these layers of complexity in architecture, and I have to inject six things to get the one thing back." But that's not a fault of either refactoring or architecture. That is a misunderstanding of when and where to apply those rules. So for example, a newer version of the systems I've written is I can write three lines of code-ish and I can do a raycast. Or I can use what I do now is I have a class called raycaster. I say raycaster, raycaster equals new raycaster, (laughs) raycaster.check, if if succeeded, get me the hit information. And that may seem like, well, why do you have a class for something that takes up three lines? Well, because it takes up three lines sometimes, mm-hmm. but other times I'm adding against layer mask checks. I'm changing out from whether it's being a mouse uh, position raycast against a screen. Other times I'm doing a viewport raycast, so it's center of the screen. Other times I'm using it as a look detector for um, some objects raycast from the center of its nose or whatever. Like, say, for a gun, it could be raycast from a pointer or a wand or something. And every single one of those examples uses my same. Raycaster class. I just provide a different form of ray and I provide a different rule set for what constitutes a valid ray or not. And it may sound more complicated to add all this stuff, but here's the thing that line of code I wrote at the start, Raycaster equals new Raycaster, check, that code will never change. Mm. So even though the implementation has gotten more complicated because it's got more things to think about, all of that stuff is hidden away from the line of code I write right now 
which is I need to do a rate check every cast, get the data from it, and do stuff with it. So when I used to do this architecture, I used to make the mistake of adding the complexity in at the layer of extraction I was at. Mm. meant me creating a raycaster required me to write 10 lines of code, and it used to require two because I'm injecting 50 things. Mm -hmm. If I'm doing that, I'm not actually extracting anything away. I'm just moving the code around into more verbose points of kind of locations. So refactoring only works if, the, if it literally makes the thing you're looking at easier. And that's kind of, that's how it should work, right? It should be easier at the uh, low levels. And the complexity should be extracted out until you inject in the complicated stuff at the higher levels. That's where your dependency of conversion, which we're not going to get into <laughs> right now. <laughs> yeah. But the point is, like, it should read easier. And the, the truth is, debugging will always be harder. I think that's probably the one caveat I will always accept, is if you're debugging a well-architected system, you will have a hard time tracking down who's calling what under what dependency, and there'll be dependency chain issue. And that requires knowledge of the system. And so, admittedly, that will be more difficult. But that trade-off is a small one compared to the ability to add a new behavior to a system without having to rewrite 15 classes to support it. So <laughs> I think it depends where you're, where you're willing to, to pay the price. And as far as I'm concerned, if I write the code well enough, it shouldn't break that often that I need to favor designing my code so that debugging is easier. <laughs> that makes any <laughs> sense, you know?